Morning all. I had an interesting game last night in the Middlesex League. I was playing against Jonathan Landu, uh, who's about uh, the same sort of rating as me at the moment, about 175. And I was playing black. We were playing against Hendon Free, which is quite a powerful team, actually, in Division 2 of the Middlesex League. So Jonathan kicked off with E4. And I thought I'd punt the uh, Scandinavian again and this gambit, which I've researched, and it seems to be called the uh, Blackburn gambit in the Scandinavians. Play C6 here. I don't actually recommend this to anyone, uh, so this is actually probably the last time I also play it as well. I think Knight F6, if you're going to play this kind of gambit, Knight F6 is probably a major upgrade to at least try and provoke C4. And now c6 is a much more respectable uh, gambit attempt because black has good control over d4 here. Bishop's kind of hemmed in. This is a much better way of trying to do this sort of gambit. I didn't actually seriously believe uh, it would be taken though. I thought um, I would just play, I thought it would be left to be honest, like uh, an earlier game in the season. But actually, it was taken. I thought, okay, I uh, get some in intuitive. I'm getting some peace activity, but actually, uh, this position, I don't think it's particularly good. Uh, White's got all sorts of things to to keep a clear pawn up. Uh, he played bishop b5. I did play e5 here, trying to get that control of the d4 square. But as I say, this this is uh, much better than um, for White than the other gambit idea, just to try and encourage c4 first, if possible. I make things actually uh, significantly worse as well now. In this position, after knight c3, a kind of weakness of the last move is exposed already. I think I've got to keep my queen on d4 here. I actually played bishop d6, so I've actually disconnected my queen away from that d4 square. And bishop b5 does immobilize the knight. And actually, I'll put on a kibitz uh, here. And um, after d4, white has a significant advantage, actually, from an engine point of view, almost like, you know, 0 0.80, almost a full clear pawn. If knight f6 instead, then okay, this, this is an improvement, actually. Just even this is an improvement here. I think if d4 here, at least I could castle in this position. Um, and it looks as though, okay, what's going on here? E takes d4, queen takes, b takes. At least here, black has the bishop pair for the pawn. It's something to show for the pawn. It's only about half a pawn, technically, from an engine point of view. Uh, that's an improvement. But in the actual game, okay, after knight c3, bishop d6, I wouldn't. I don't think I want to play this ever again, not even in a bullet game. Uh, it's not that good at all after d4. However, it is causing my opponent to spend a lot of time on his moves here. And he was a little bit late for the game, about 10 15 minutes late. So, surprise opening might have some value in that practical respect. Uh, so, queen a5. I just thought d takes e4 as an example, queen takes d4. What does black actually do here? Uh, for example, if knight f6, then all sorts of things actually seem quite appealing for white here, even the idea of casting queenside maybe. Maybe taking here, casting queenside. That's already forcing off an exchange of queens. It's pretty miserable prospects there. Uh, so I didn't really like that idea of e takes d4. It seems to be like developing uh, the pieces of my opponents. Uh, ready for all sorts of things like castling queen side. So queen a5 instead. Um, and my opponent goes for another pawn, which maybe is a little bit risky in some respects, but it is now two pawns uh, up. So this is a bit of a dodgy gambit. Bishop b4. Okay, I'm threatening queen takes b5. Um, bishop d2 apparently is a, it's a strong move here that white has at his disposal. Just against queen takes b5 as a threat, and what is actually what is actually black doing here? For example, knight g7 a3. As I say, I I wouldn't want anyone to play this opening. This is just a ridiculously bad opening sequence uh, to be two pawns uh, down. 
Uh, bishop d2 just seems to refute the whole lot. But my opponent played bishop takes c6, which does give me a potentially useful bishop on this diagonal. So actually, I'm less than a pawn now after this bishop takes c6. Technically, queen queen d4. I played c5 here. Queen e3. Bishop a6. So I'm occupying that that diagonal. But um, again, uh, White should have uh, quite a big advantage with some normal moves. Bishop d2 was played. Knight e7. And in fact, now it looks as though this is very dangerous for Black after Knight e4. I had serious regrets actually. Why did I play this way? Uh, I'm threatened actually with c3. It seems now to win this bishop. So, and also there's this idea of knight d6 check, which is on f7 to be followed with say queen f3, which is quite a menace. Uh, what does Black actually do here? Uh, taking on d2 doesn't seem at all appetizing after queen takes d2, hitting my queen. Uh, just two pawns down with knight d6 on the cards, that's horrendous. So I think I played the only practical move to play here. Um, let's see, is there any other? If knight d5, let's have a quick look at this. Knight d6 here, we'd have a quick look at this after, and it seems queen f3 is killing here, and the engine's validating this actually this is a variation we had in post-mortem so bishop takes d2 king d1 with f7 under fire and d5 black is collapsing quite quickly because now again there's pressure on a8 it's just horrendous this is just like plus five nearly for white so let's go back after knight e4 i castle and here uh c3 is played now technically um, this might not be the best move in fact here uh, which I played knight d5 maybe uh, that there, there, is, there, there are some better moves uh, which I'll, I'll reveal shortly actually I don't want to spoil the game continuation too much knight d5 was played and perhaps best for white is either taking on b4 or queen f3 if, if taking on b4 Although this loses the exchange like this, white well, goes down the exchange. This knight um, is actually, uh, with a bit of care from white, it can be collected pretty soon. Uh, first, this c5 is a problem, um, and if we get this kind of situation, white is going to be better. So this kind of situation, knight is being collected. White's going to be a little bit better about more than a pawn actually worth technically it seems. So okay there was a, something else though played here. Queen f3 is also very very good um, or rather quite quite good not not amazingly good but um, the best is just to take it on b4 but what was actually played was Queen g3 and actually this gives me uh, an important opportunity uh, to play a move which turns the tables all of a sudden, evaluation wise. Can you spot what black can play in this position? If I give you 10 seconds, you might want to pause the video. So, what can black play in this position? Okay, I hope you've discovered it. Queen b5, it threatens actually this mate in one. It's a very, very useful threat in the circumstances. Uh, not giving white much time for any bishop h6 or anything. It has to respond to that threat. Um, but actually, bishop h6 um, is actually, I think, the, the absolute best move in this in this particular position to, to allow queen f1, because it does give the king the d2 square. If bishop h6 was played here, apparently black still now okay though. Okay, after g6, let's have a quick look at this. g6. Um, so say bishop takes, then check is very good for black. Uh, this this is just too dangerous for for white here. So unnecessary counterplay. 
Uh, but what else does white do if knight d2 to protect f1? The bishop can come out to a5 now. The king's stranded in the center here. Doesn't really want to go to the queen side, particularly with this open file there. Uh, so this this is kind of horrendous. Uh, if castles, for example, actually even knight takes c3 in this position is very very strong. This this is a crushing attack now. This position. Uh, let's follow this through, and white's getting slaughtered. Uh, there, there there are lots of attacking options anyway. Like this, it's just the engine line. So let's let's go back. So after queen b5, it seems the tables have been turned here. And to make things even worse, Bishop H6 wasn't even played, even though that's terrible uh, compared to what White was up earlier. White castled Queen's side now, and Black to play again. And there's an absolutely crushing move in this position. I wonder if you can spot it. If I give you ten seconds here. Okay, I hope you found this one. It's a beauty, actually. Bishop a3. It actually, again, threatens mating one as the threat. And it's basically like compelling white to take that, basically. Um, there's no time for any anything like bishop a6 now. So and after taking just any rook to b8 here, I play rook a b8, threatening not just queen b2, but also queen b1 mating. My opponent could have resigned here at move 16. It just shows how dangerous um, king safety can be in chess, even if you're a couple of pawns up, if you, you haven't castled securely. Um, this is the kind of thing that can happen. My opponent flings in to extend the game a bit, this queen sack, and bishop h6. I, I, I take that. After rook takes d5, check, and I take on e4. Check King G seven and now my opponent finally resigned. It's actually a forced mating free here. Whatever White does, like that Rook B two is, is forcing a mate. An interesting game, but it's certainly an opening I completely condemn. I wouldn't want anyone to play this even in bullet chess. There's, I, it's actually though given a name. It's after Blackburn was a fierce um, English uh, player. I think um, he was a very dangerous attacking player, but I'm not really convinced with this um, at all. I think actually knight f6 is is quite popular here uh, to try and at least encourage c4 and you know get fairly solid positions in the Scandinavian without having to have a queen excursion. So that's a very very interesting alternative knight f6 um, as as gambits go here. Okay, um, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, anyway, I was pleased with, um, obviously I was pleased with the practical aspects, but theoretically, I'm not just saying the opening is not, uh, isn't, is not that interesting. As addendum, there's one more interesting thing though in post-mortem which came up about this game. Then in this position, if on knight d5, queen f3, I should just add a bit so again here. Uh, we had a quick look at uh, a particular variation on uh, rook e8. And if c takes b4, knight takes b4, knight e2. Uh, this is actually, actually much better for white. This is just. Um, but there was an interesting thing that came up with knight c2 check. King d1, queen a4. Now white is actually winning with b3 technically, but if white does play uh, a bad move here, knight c3. Uh, can you spot a forced mate in free? Uh, it's quite beautiful actually here. It's quite a beautiful thing I thought, as a puzzle goes, as chess puzzles go. Uh, so there's a nice mate in free. You might want to pause the video. I'll give you 10 seconds to pause the video starting 
from now black to mate in three. Okay, knight e3, double check, and this cover check. And this bishop is quite very useful here. Now, if king c1, then queen c2 is mate. So the king goes to e1 here. Can you spot black to now mate in two? If I give you 10 seconds again here, just in case you missed it first time. Okay. I hope you got this one. Queen D one check. Uh, at first, I thought um, one of my my colleagues on my team just blundered here. Um, you know, missing Queen takes D one. But actually, Queen takes D one. There's Knight takes G two, mate. And on Rook takes D one. There's Knight C two, mate. So the Knight and Bishop are wonderfully coordinating in this position of the Queen D one. If knight takes d1 again, knight c2 is mate. Anyway, a bit of fun there. Hope you enjoyed that. Comments or questions again on YouTube. Cheers.